goodness. This that's... guy is on point yeah. today. 8. Good 8. job, 5. Kurt. Yeah, 8.5. 8. 8. 5. Totally. You get the 10 someday, son. Doubt it. Okay, liquid humic. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so we talked about dry humic. If yeah. you haven't, if you didn't, if you haven't heard the uh, discussion we had about dry, check it out. We've got it in previous video. But liquid humic, dry. We talk about dry is for soil. Mm -hmm. Liquid, in my mind, is kind of that middle of the zone where it's beneficial to soil but beneficial to plants. It's kind of that crossover before we get to fulvix, which is more for plants. Yep. And so let's talk a little bit about, I run liquid humic in my strip till bar for nitrogen stabilization. That's probably the number one thing I get asked about is yep. nitrogen stabilization with carbon. So I want to hit on quickly, um, how, does carbon, the, how does carbon and nitrogen work together? Why should we use carbon over, say, other stabilizers? Or why would a guy, not that he necessarily should, why would a guy, how would it benefit him? Um, and yeah, I guess that's, you know, and then what else, what other effects are we looking for? Um, like I said, I run it in my strip till streaming wheat, um, you know, putting, putting fertilizer on the, you know, on the ground for whatever crop it might be in liquid form. Um, and there's guys doing all kinds of stuff with liquids. Yeah. Yeah. Well, liquid humic. So pretty much to bring people up to speed so we're so we take they take the dry product put it through a, a processing um and what happens when they make it a very a higher acidic condition humic acid comes out mm -hmm. extract that put it with water so it can actually flow yeah. um and then you're able to add that to your liquid fertilizer when i think of humic right off the bat nitrogen stabilization um i I get to there if you're doing if you're doing a one pass system or you're doing you have a lot of nitrogen there up front. It is a good idea to tie it up with carbon because when it comes up to the humic acid, okay. Um, of course, if I had my presentation, I'd say, "Look here." Right. Um, but Maybe it, that's it, what we should get. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It has a it's a very it's a big molecule. Okay, okay. Also has a CEC. I mean, I think anywhere between two hundred and fifty to four hundred CEC. Okay, a lot Lots of, of holding. A, a lot of binding sites yep. per se. And what's nice with like 32, okay, it has positive and negatives within that solution. 32 nitrogen, 32%. Yep. Yeah. Okay. UAN. Yep. So when that's breaking down in the soil, if it breaks off to the nitrate, the nitrate can attach to the humic. And the ammonium or urea can attach to the humic. Okay. okay. So that's what's unique about humic is it has that ability. A lot of the research um, shown with with utilizing humics, you're gaining a twenty to thirty percent efficiency. I mean, mm. that's just a common theme. Every every research study that gets to it seems like it's twenty to thirty percent, twenty to thirty percent. Um, with addition, if that's additional retention or more availability, I mean, that's just a common number that pops up. Yeah. Um, but with those additional binding sites, so you get that nutrient mixed with a carbon okay it's in a form that biology likes to talk in mm. okay biology likes to talk in things in carbon forms okay. um so since it's already there already present it's not binding up to other minerals within the soil you have more uh waterable extractable organic carbon and or sorry organic nitrogen in that situation what does that mean that's good for a slower release okay. within that soil so Putting it in fewer with your spikes. Yeah. Yeah. I would say fewer spikes, a little bit more of a consistent release throughout the season. Gotcha. Um, Which is healthier. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, and also it's helping with salt load. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and that's a big thing. Like if a person's streaming on nitrogen and they're utilizing liquid humic, yes, you're getting the retention, but I see the biggest value in my head as the salt buffering capacity of that mm -hmm. situation or you know you, we've talked about before using liquid urea as a foliar mm -hmm. okay and adding humic to that yeah okay? i did that um it comes back to my making, best corn i had last year had that on <laughs> there you go yeah just making it more plant safe mm. okay um i know one thing to be aware of you know when it comes to humics 
is the pH of your solution, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just something to be aware of. UAN, it works great with. Um, a lot of your uh, commodity-based fertilizers is going to work great with. Just know, I mean, always do a jar test. But if it's something yeah. that's very acidic, uh, you can get precipitates in those situations. Yeah. Just straight and yes. simple. Yeah. Straight and simple. So, um, but yeah, it, those additional binding sites within that soil, whenever you're putting a band of fertility down, I think it's a huge benefit, definitely if it's in a strip, two by two, um, you're going to gain more retention, okay? You're going to not lose as much to volatilization, if that is a worry. Um, But then also, using that carbon chain is a more slow release throughout the season, period. Mm -hmm. Um, One thing to know, too, about humix or the way I see uh, liquid humix if you are doing like a wide dress or wide drop, if you're putting that in the tank, that's fine. Just don't overdo it there too. Right. You know, because if you're doing a wide drop of V8, you really want that nutrient to get into that plant ASAP. Absolutely. I mean, during peak growing, I think it's absorbing seven pounds of nitrogen a day. Wow. So you don't want that we don't tied, want up. To tie it up. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> we so, don't want to tie it up. We want to keep it from leaching as much as we can yeah but uh yeah if you're so what i have implemented on my opera uh, so i'm gonna run heavier rev, heavier humix in my strip till when the more the more time between when you need it need the fertility to when you want it to okay you need you got real you want it and you're putting it out the more yeah. time distance between that the more humix i add yeah <clears throat> now more is not always better yep that is, you know, that's not typical that you hear from people from someone that that does you know provide a product for to, that the guys can purchase. Um, you know, there's a there's a zone there, so you know, and we're doing a lot of research on that. Well, and it's just know why you're using that tool, right? Exactly. Because if you're using it for nitrogen stabilizing, yeah, you don't want to over stabilize it in surplus certain situations sure now there's also philosophies and theories out there using humic acid as a conditioner by itself and pumping on like three to five gallons okay okay as a soil conditioner go for it but just know okay if you're trying to get as much done as possible with one pass so you're thinking to yourself i'll go out there and only put let's just say it's 10 gallons 15 gallons of 32 Mm -hmm. and then i'm gonna dump in five gallons of humic that's not a good ratio. That sure. that nitrogen's that nitrogen may be there at tassel right. <laughs> later in the year, but for that right. for that initial, I mean, I see nitrogen as electrolyte. Okay. Okay. With uh, for the soil profile, if we take electrolyte, okay, but I put a lock on top and I can't use this until after the game's done. How much benefit is it going to do to me? Sure. Absolutely. Okay. I, I want to be able to just twist it off once and be done. Right. I don't want to have a six-digit pin and all this stuff I have to do when I want to drink. Sure. So Humic same. is a good cap. Yeah, it's a good cap. Humic is um, a good cap. But for, like, soil conditioning or people wanting to trial, like, do that just in your strip till. Yeah. Just that. And, and I mean, trial it And trial first. it, yes. <laughs> but I, I do think there is some great things to see at higher rates, but trial it. And don't just say, don't try to do one pass to check 15 boxes of what Humic does. Okay. Sure. <laughs> like, don't, like. <laughs> don't try to chain, don't, don't go and try to, hey, I'm going to make a big difference on my soil for my soil with liquid. Yeah. Because yeah. that's, that's miss. that's really not well used dollars. Yeah. You know, if, a, if someone tells you to spray liquid Humic on your ground for a beneficial soil application, I'm not going to say it doesn't work. I, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say, as a farmer, mm-hmm. on my farm, I have I use the dry. If I am working for the soil, I'm going with the dry. Because you get so many more yeah. uh, benefits in the humic chain. Yep. Different, different molecules that do different things. The liquid, not as much. And, you know, it's just different tools. You don't use it. You don't use a hammer to unscrew, you know, a torque screw. Yep. It's, you know, but you need a hammer to build a house. Yep. So it's, you know, different tools for different jobs. Yeah. Um, just another 
precaution. So I love humic or liquid humic, and it may sound like I'm a negative Nancy right now, um, but I would keep it personally away from herbicides. Yeah, you I, know, I agree. Because the last thing I want to see is somebody's putting on, which is say. 32 at a 20 gallon rate through their sprayer. Mm-hmm. They're throwing humic, they're throwing Roundup, and they have their residual. Mm-hmm. The residual and their broadleaf killer did great, but their grasses are still out there. Sure. You know, um, there has been some studies or some trials that have happened that if that humic stays in the tank long enough with certain herbicides, I mean, Roundup is the most common one that we've seen res- these kind of results with it, it can bind up that glyphosate. Sure. So, um, it's a cleaner. Yeah. It's a cleaner and a sponge. Yeah. It, yeah. it does a great job <laughs> of cleaning. <laughs> yeah. 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 Cleaning so, and holding. Yeah. Um, just be aware of that. I, I, I do really like it for your higher nitrogen applications early. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I personally would like to see trials at, a half an ounce uh, per pound of N to an ounce. Yeah. The closer you are to when the plant needs it, bump the, it back. Bump it back. Your rage back. Um, the longer, bump it up a little yeah. bit. Sure. Um, when 10, it comes 34, to, 0 and a two by two. Oh yes. Thank you. That just went down <laughs> the next big rabbit. question that we've been asked. Um, I do. So where the studies are like, this is where it fits. And like, nobody disagrees. Sure. Is with phosphorus and with nitrogen. Okay. Seeing that result. Um, and I think the biggest thing, too, is because those two can tie up or leave mm-hmm. through leaching. Or yep. I should say nitrogen's leaching, phosphorus is tying yep. up to other other nutrients. So um, so that 1034-0, when it's breaking down, okay, mm-hmm. if you're doing a larger application on a two-by-two two system, um, as it's breaking down, it's, I think it's like 10 to 15 days. And if it's not used, it gets absorbed by some some nutrient. Gotcha, okay, if in you your don't soil. Have, yeah, so you're utilizing... Small window. Yeah, so you're using nitrogen, so it's tying up with that, which then is helpful for the biology to recognize it, consume it, break it down for the plant. Gotcha. So when the plant releases its message, per se, saying, I need FOSS, sure. it has it in a carbon-available form. Yeah. Instead of that plant or that bug going by and saying, oh, that's calcium phosphate, nope, next one. Mm. <laughs> okay, or if it's able to release it. So, gotcha. um, so yeah, I, I mean, liquid humix have great plays and the studies show nitrogen and phosphorus all day long. Yeah. Like I can just sit here and say, yep. Buffing, <laughs> buffing the biggest, you know, the ones that I have talked to our customer base biggest about is buffing salt at a 1034-0 and a two by two. Yep. Um, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not, we're not going to say where these fertilities belong. That's not our job. That's your job as a farmer to decide. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, in a two by two, we're reducing the salt, we're taking the phosphorus, <clears throat> we're making it more plant available. Um, then the, you know, argument of do you need as much, you know, if we're raising and that's that's something to trial on your own farm. That's something I saw. The well, more availability, I, the, the yeah. more, more efficiency I could gain on my fertility availability, the less fertility I'd need in certain applications. Well, there is more. You, I mean, you know, a good friend of ours said the other day, he's like, if you, you can throw a thousand pounds on a field of something, if you get nothing in a plant. Why does it matter? Yeah. yeah. What did it do? So, and I think that's a big disconnect we as farmers make is we put it out there. We feel good that we did it. And then are we doing our due diligence to make sure that it <laughs> out there went up there? Yeah. There's more correlation with phosphorus absorption of plants correlated to how much carbon is cycling in your soil than actually pounds of phosphorus. Sure. I mean, that study is, yeah. that study is out there. Yes. So, I mean, that's where you're trying to lean towards is your, that dollar that you're spending on the FOSS also stabilizing slash making it more plant available as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, liquid humix is a great opportunity, another great place to start. Sure. Um, I see on an operation. Um, and, I mean, we have it here if a person wants to dive into that. We do. You know, and I do yeah. think uh, it'd be very interesting to see um, different different rates. But, no, those are trials on smaller acres. Yeah. If it's more of a tried and true across every acre, sure. you're looking at half to full ounce. Right. And I would focus on where your heaviest nitrogen load is the earliest. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And if your heaviest load is at wide drop, you're, at low, you're still at a lower rate. Yep. Okay. Yeah. If you're heavier loads in the beginning, that is where the opportunity is. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, 
it's we're going to talk we're going to talk about fulvix next but the better the soil and we you know the really really good soil i we shift a little more to fulvix in and lower organic matter sandy arid environments you know things of that nature where moisture is very critical and and holding capacity is very critical you know man humic shine yes they really shine very added benefit i'm gonna be a random squirrel moment i know we're supposed to keep these oh. to 15 minutes but i'm gonna veto that okay. um so just real quick one thing i think is an additional benefit of humic that we got to think about too okay is the oxidation or the antioxidant effect okay okay because of the carbon yeah. Okay. So within that carbon, if you have a over oxidized situation, okay. which if people say, why does that matter? Um, there, so pH is a factor of how available nutrients are, but so is how oxidized your soil is. Okay. okay? So of course, don't quote oxidized me. Oxidized being oxidized. There's a lot of quote unquote free radicals moving around a lot of electrons that don't know what to do and they're just kind of bouncing everywhere. Okay. Kind of the same in the human body. Okay. okay. You don't want that. Sure. Okay. That's why we have antioxidants. That's why you should eat your blueberries. Okay. Got it. So humic is earth, earth's blueberries. Sure. Okay. Um, we'll just move forward on that one. <laughs> okay. Next. Um, but it's, it, it's that same thing too. Um, so, and if a person wanted to dive into this more, okay, look at, pH is soil nutrients, but then also it's called redox. Okay. Okay. Reduction versus oxi oxidative um, meters, flows, uh, and how that relates to soil nutrients as well. Okay. Okay. Humix, because of their carbon uh, base, have the ability to be an antioxidant. So it can, it can take electrons if it needs to. Yes. Or it can give it. Sure. So it has that ability. Yeah. So I'm going to leave that one tidbit for my fellow science nerds that want to dive into there that because that's one thing huge with humics that um, no, we, we need totally, to talk about. We totally seen. All right, guys, guys uh, helping with iron chlorosis, guys helping yes. with heavy salts, guys um, uh, heavy, heavy metals issues yeah. in their soils. Um, yeah. Over applications of, of uh, manure. Uh, it's things that we're seeing that that these are really helping in. Yes, um, you know, and, and being intentional with that. It's it's not. It's more like, hey, this is a really good tool to fix something that we messed up. In a lot of cases, fair enough. You know, yes. Uh, or hey, this is a problem. How can we fix that? Okay. So just out of time and respect of we time, we gotta go. We gotta stop. We gotta go. But so you can check. You can. We got all. We got this. We got this available. Check us yeah. out on the website. Um, singularagonomics.com. Yeah. So on to the next. On to the next. Guys, thanks for watching the content so far. If you would like to see more, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got all the full length podcasts, other video information, tutorials on there. Also on all the major uh, podcast platforms and social media sites Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, etc. So if you like this, go ahead and check more out on all those platforms.